Hey everyone, welcome to this chess video. So in this one, I had a really cool concept I wanted to share. This is a pattern that I see come up a lot in pawn endgames, but it can by all means come up in really any stage of the chess game. And so just understanding this concept, I think will help a lot of people win a lot of chess games and perhaps save a lot of draws in positions that probably would otherwise be lost. And so here's an endgame position, which I think really illustrates this concept really well. So here, first we have to evaluate, well, who's winning? And I intentionally took away the evaluation bar on the left here because I want people to try and figure out, first of all, what side is winning the game? Because in a real chess game, you don't have the evaluation bar right next to you. So, okay, so let's try and use our imbalances and understanding the position and try and reason out which side is probably better in this end game. So here, both kings are opposing each other. So right now, it is white to move. So if we were completely out of moves, then we would realize that black actually has king opposition. And so this is actually one thing that's actually in black's favor against white. Now, the second observation might be that both sides here on the king side, both have one pawn. Um, so our kings cannot go too far. Like if white's king were to go to e3 at any point, then the black king would infiltrate with king to g4. And unfortunately, they'll be picking up this pawn and winning the game. You know, so that's no good for white. And very similarly, if white's king were to ever step further, like say g3, at some point the black king might come to e4, possibly infiltrate either d3 or e3, and then they're just going to get behind all of the queenside pawns, and that's also going to be better for black. Okay, so, so far it looks like, at least on this flank, black is probably better. Now if we look over here, we have a three pawns for black and a three pawns for white. And so what that means is there's no pawn majority, and so... In theory, because of the structure looks okay, there shouldn't be a way to force any pawns, usually speaking, to become past pawns. So this is more or less blockaded to a kind of a draw here in that sense. Now, if we look at space, that's another really important imbalance. So in this case, black is much better space because if we look at white's advanced pawns, you know, this pawn is advanced to the third rank, not too far advanced, you know, and so that's one of their farther advanced pawns, at least on this flank. Now here, this is even more advanced, but this is blocked by the pawn ram h5. So you can't really do much about that. So really the focus is here. And their furthest advanced pawn is just on their third rank, not too far. Black, on the other hand, they're all the way up to their fifth rank. So this is much more space if we were to kind of look at who has what territory. This is almost like black's territory. And on the queen side, at least, white is only really restricted to these because they don't have a pawn advance further up. So we can see, of course, that from above, you know, black has way more space here. And so because of that, you know, you would often think, well, black must be better. Like they have the better queen side, they have the king opposition, you know, and, you know, white can't go too far because then they'll drop one of these pawns. So with that being said, if you were evaluating this, the logical inference would be that black is actually better. Now, normally that would be the case because all of our analysis was correct. But in this situation with white to move, there's actually one move that saves the draw. And I'll put the evaluation bar back up, just so you can see. This is an equal position if white knows exactly what they're doing. And uses this concept I'm about to share with everyone to help draw this game. So what concept am I referring to? So here there is a concept of backwardness, which happens a lot with pawns, and especially pawn endgames, because, of course, they're connected to pawns. And so you have to kind of understand what we're going for with this, for this whole position to make sense. So here the key move that you really have to play must play it in this position, anything else black is better. So the key move you must play is pawn to a4. And so this is such a strong move, why? And the reason is because, remember I said this is a three versus three, you know, pawns here on the queen side. So if both sides play normal, it's gonna be either A, it's gonna be completely balanced and no one's gonna make progress, or B, black is gonna be better because they have the queen side space. And so we don't really want that as white. So how do you stop both of those? Well, we have a threat of our own. And so the threat of our own is because we have equal pawns here, we have to have one of our pawns actually hold back multiple pawns of the opponent. So here with a4, it's sort of like we're contesting this a pawn. You know, both sides are fighting here and these pawns cannot advance. But in this case, the b pawn also cannot advance because of course we would just capture the pawn and this would really not help black in the least. So in this case, these two black pawns are actually being held back by this one pawn from white. And so this one pawn is actually kind of like playing this double coverage defense here with, you know, with black. And in theory, if they're using up more of black's resources, then we should eventually end up with extra resources ourselves. Like if these two black pawns are held up, you know, well, if it only cost us one pawn to hold it, 
then that means that in theory we have one pawn somewhere else in the position that might actually be an asset. Maybe some possibility very long term might be able to become a pass pawn and perhaps win the game for us. Now in this case, that's not, the, that's not what happens. In this case, we just have to be very precise and hold the draw. So, okay, so how do we do that? Well, right now they're, of course, trying to, you know, play this move. Because if we did nothing, like we didn't play the a4 move, let's just say we play a very passive move like b3, then you'll see the problem in why black is going to win, because they'll play pawn to b5, and if we advance c3, try to be very slow about it, they can play c5. And this is the kind of position we wanted to avoid that I said, because of black space advantage, they're going to be better. So if we ever, like, move our king, this king is going to infiltrate, you know, we just lose all these pawns. And what else is there? Well, if we don't move our king here, you know, after this, like, where else do you go? Any pawn you push, they're going to win. If we push the A pawn, well, that's no good because they play C4. And now this is a very common pattern where we can't stop both threats here. So they're just threatening to capture here. And if we push, well, the other threat is they just take here. And now this pawn is a pass pawn. And so we can't stop black from promoting, unfortunately. So there's really no way to make progress because of this type of lever here where we have this type of formation, and this is going to make a pass pawn by force. So that A pawn is no good. Can we push the B pawn? No, we can't. Um, either A or C captures this winning for black, but A is just simpler, because here, if you recapture, then they have C4 and its king opposition. And now our king has to move. And we saw the problem we mentioned earlier, where our king really doesn't want to move. If we go here, they infiltrate. That's no good. If we go here, they're going to infiltrate this way and then eventually win this pawn, that's also no good. So none of those really work. So unfortunately, that doesn't really go too well for us. And now I'm going back. The very last one to look at, of course, is the C pawn. If they go to C pawn here, it's the same pattern in reverse. They play the same formation. And here, black is going to make a pass pawn by force. And white cannot stop this, and they're losing the chess game. So that's what happens if we be passive. Okay, so we play A4 to not be passive. Well, what's the whole point of that? Other than the backwardness we're controlling. Specifically, it's this square. This square is a very important square. And why? Because when we play a4, we want to really deter this pawn from advancing. Because if we can do that, it's the two versus one that we mentioned. So here, well, black is going to try and support this. Ideally, with something like c6, you know, try and get in and support the advance of b5. So white here has to be very careful and try and stop them, you know, and play very appropriately in this position. So here, let's just say that, you know, it's black to move. Say they move their king over then white can just shadow their king, keep the opposition, and eventually they'll run out of moves. You know, if we go back, it's just shuffling, and we don't mind that, that's a draw for white. So they're like, okay, fine. Now if you say, play c6, let's try and support this pawn advance, you know, the b5 that we mentioned. Well, this also doesn't work, because here we can just advance ourselves, and we really want to make sure this pawn advance does not happen. So we play c4 to try and deter this. And so if they play c5 to try and block everything, well, then that's fine because we play b3, and now we have the king opposition, where it is black to move, and so now we actually have, you know, the kings in front of each other. If they move, we just shadow their king, and we're eventually going to just repeat because they'll just shuffle back and forth, and we're going to keep their king out, so there's no way to make progress, and all the pawns are stuck. So that's ideally what we want here. Now, we might think, well, instead of a4 at the very beginning, well, if the whole point is control the square, can we play c4 instead? You know, do the same role, and the answer is no. We can't play c4 because then we have the same backwardsness problem to us. They play pawn a4 instead. And now these two pawns are actually held back by this one black pawn. And so we're actually losing in this sense because of the same pattern used against us. So basically what you have to be careful of is this two versus one thing. This two versus one thing here is really the big problem. So these two pawns are held back by this one pawn. And so very similarly, we have to use this to our favor, you know, back here with a4. And in both cases, it's more or less the same pattern, where what we're trying to do is exploit the fact that this pawn is backwards. And in the other position here, you know, if they play pawn to a4, then it is the b3 pawn, which is backwards. And what makes this backwards is that we can't advance it, because then we would lose it to this pawn here. And so those are just some key pawn endgame really as far as structure goes some key concepts that are really important and especially in the end game they come up a lot but understanding these ideas is important really throughout the game it's just that in end games it's more likely because there's so many pawns on the board most things are traded off and in a regular you know position the middle game or the opening there's so many pieces on the board that could 
also influence the position, you know, and maybe the pawns aren't as important in that sense. Um, still important, but not the ultimate goal that, you know, really shines through, like in this example here. In this example, because we're in the end game, you know, pawn end game, really, this is the only concept that is holding the draw for white. Anything else, black is winning because the advantages that we mentioned earlier. So in this case, I, you know, hope that everyone found that useful. I'm just kind of reviewing. So we have A4 is the only move that holds the draw, and they really have nothing better. You know, the best they can do is move their king over, and then we'll just follow it, keep the opposition. And if they try and slowly advance their pawns and try and support, you know, this B5 to try and get a pass pawn going, maybe try and further their, you know, advantage on the queen side there because there's space, we'll just stop them because we have to keep this pawn backwards, and that's the only thing that's going to help us draw here. So if they ever advance a pawn, fine, we'll just, you know, block this and it's going to be a draw. If they try forcing this anyway, then we're actually winning ourselves. Then white is that better? You can see the bar shoot up here. And the reason why is now we just take the pawn and, you know, there's no way they can stop us. We'll just go here and now their king has to be running back. And if their king runs back, well, then our king can infiltrate on this side. And it's the same problem they had with the king opposition. So that was the idea behind the backwardness and how you can use that to actually save some chess games on your own part. Very common endgame pattern, and so I hope everyone found that useful. So thanks for stopping by, everyone. I'll see you in the next chess video.